can there be heteroscedasticity in time series data? Sure. Yeah, by at this point everybody in finance has heard all about autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. Right? So that the not only the error are the errors serially correlated, but with the passage of time the variance changes in the error term. So it's possible to have heteroscedasticity in uh, time series data. But if you don't take the second semester of this with me, hopefully you'll talk about it when you talk when you have class with uh, Dr. Way, five whatever step five eighteen or whatever the class is. Um, is it possible to have serial correlation in cross section data? Yeah, but it's of a very interesting nature, and this is something that is becoming increasingly popular in uh, geography and urban studies. Whatever shock Wall Street is causing to Harrisburg this year is probably also perturbing uh, Colorado and California and so on and so forth. The magnitude of the effect will differ from state to state. So the, the practical consequence is that the disturb Pennsylvania's disturbance is going to appear to be correlated with California. But California is a long way from the epicenter of the financial markets, and so we would expect that the correlation between Pennsylvania's error and California's would be much smaller than the correlation between Pennsylvania's and New Jersey's. So there is a notion of spatial correlation which resembles serial correlation. Adjacent states have error terms that are correlated with one another. States that are quite far apart, the correlation is negligible and not important. The problem with <laughs> spatial correlation is that it's very difficult to get a grip on it for the following reason. Uh, you guys, most of you have grown up in an era when you don't have computer punch cards with your data on them. Anybody ever have a deck of computer cards to submit your job to the computer? No? Okay, this is ancient history. In the bad old days, if we had time series data, we would type all the observations for this year on a card, on a hollering, on a card that had little holes punched in it, complete with hanging chads and things like that. So we'd punch this year's data on a card, and then the next card would have, the next card in the deck would have data from last year, and then there would be another card with the year before, and so on and so forth. And, and good coding practice was that you would code the year in one of the fields on the card. Just in case on the way home you happen to trip and spill your deck of cards out on the pavement, you could pick them up and put them back together in the right order because time has a particular sequence to it. Well, what happens if you had a cross-section of data on all the states in the union and you believed that there was spatial correlation and back in your office you had assembled your deck of cards in a particular order so that uh, the states that you thought were highly correlated with one another were adjacent in your deck of cards. And on your and but you didn't put the state code on each card. You didn't put PA on the Pennsylvania card and NJ on the New Jersey card and so on and so forth. And on your way home, the bully from school knocked you down and spilled all your cards all over the pavement. And it was time to pick them up. How could you ever get them back into the right order? You couldn't because there is no natural sequencing of the geographic cards. So statisticians over the years have spent a lot of time thinking about spatial correlation. And they now teach courses over in geography and urban studies to deal only with those questions. It's really important for those guys. Uh, 